Welcome along to part three of our video series where we are creating ourselves a 3D dice. As you can see now, we've got all sides of our dice looking good. All the numbers are in. It's time to just pretty it up a bit, add a bit of colour and fill at some of those edges. So you can see now that some of these edges are quite sharp. And what we're going to do with this dice is just smooth them out a little bit by adding a fillet to them. Okay, so you've got this option at the top in your ribbon to fill at the edges. Okay, and before we start filleting, what we're going to do is change the radius here from 2 mils. And we're going to do it to 0 0.02 millimeters, so quite a small one. And simply go around, and we're going to start clicking on the edges of this shape. Okay, you can see the edges start to fill it. We want to get all the long edges. Now you'll have to hold shift and just use your wheel to swing around. And just pick some of those edges that you can't see. Once you've got them all, nearly got them all, I think, simply click OK. Then you've smoothed out the edges. Yeah, you'll click Apply if you want. And just close that box. And you've now smoothed out the edges of your dice, which looks a bit nicer. The other edges I was thinking of filleting are these circles here. OK, so if you grab the fillet again, I'm going to make it even smaller this time. 0 0.01 mils for our fillet. And just click on the outside circle here Oops. not going to work for me let me just try that again 0 0.01 now we've got it there we go so you want to get the outside circle on each face you'll have to swing these around a bit it's just a matter of going around each face and filleting those outside or upper circles Side and we got we got this side yet. That one, that one, that one, and that one. That's the big one. Here it is. All six. All right. So zooming out now. Let's have a quick look around. I think I've got every side selected, which I do. So we can apply that close that box as well so now all of our numbers have slightly smoother edges which look good as well next thing I'm going to do is do a bit of coloring in on the dice okay this is a little bit of a tedious process I probably should have colored it before I did uh, some of this other stuff it doesn't matter we'll do that now up the top in your quick access toolbar at the top here you've got these different color options okay now you can go in here and put material on it if you wanted to there's some pretty fancy stuff there so you can make a pretty flush looking dice but I'm going to keep it simple and click this middle color wheel here it's the adjust one okay and basically you select a face and choose a color for it so if I click this face here I'm going to go to the drop down box press the W um, button on the keyboard and just select white it doesn't quite look white but it actually did change it to white alright and you can I don't know if you can do multiple sides and no, just do one side at a time and press the tick now what you can do though Pretty sure you can select sides by holding down shift. And even these little filleted edges, you're going to have to hold down shift and select. And we can just color them all in one hit. So we don't want to color the numbers in. They're going to be a different color. They're going to be black. Oops. I'll have to get in close to get some of these edges. Sure you get those little center points of the fillets as well remember I am holding down shift while I do this to select all these different um, sides easy to miss a couple of those little edges uh, so be careful with that all right this is looking pretty good now I think I've got most bits selected Oops, I missed that bit in there. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So I should be able to now go up to... Oops, I keep stuffing up. <laughs> there we go. Should be able to go back up to a little colour wheel up the top here, the adjust tool. 
and change the colors there to white. So let's do a search of that drop down list and select white and press the green tick. And now each side of our dice is colored in white. Even though it looks a little bit like a light gray, it's actually white. Okay, the next tedious part to color in is all the numbers. Okay, this is a bit annoying with the fillet. So I'm going to have to zoom in nice and close and you're going to have to select a few things on each circle. So hold shift and select both the upper and lower sections. Make sure they highlight blue. Just like that. And then you can select the base as well. Don't forget that. So I'll just do this side first to make sure it's working. So up the top here in my little color wheel, the color that we want, not plain black, I'm going to go for a black cast. All right, and that just colors in our numbers. Press the little tick here when you're done, and you've now got your colored in numbers, which looks good. So I'm just going to quickly run around and do the rest of these. Okay, I'll do one more that so you can see, and then I'll just pause the video so you don't have to watch me do the rest of them. That will take too long. So three things for each little circle. You want to select this up a bit, hold shift and select this next bit, and then the base. Make sure you're holding shift when you do this. I accidentally just clicked off before. Oh, I've done it again. But yeah, just hold shift while you are selecting these. Otherwise, you might be able to select more than one hit. Go to the color wheel and choose the black cast. All right. I'm going to pause the video while I go around and just do each of the sides on my dice. You don't need to watch me do all that. I'll come back at the end and just show you how we're going to finish off. Alright, so I'm back again now and I have coloured in each number on every side of my dice. So that's pretty much our 3D model all done. Okay, so that's your isometric drawing all sorted. So I'm just going to save that up the top. And we're going to leave this open. I'm just going to go and close my original dice that I had open. Okay, so I've got my document here that I've just created open and nothing else open down the bottom here in my tabs. What we're going to do now is create an orthographic projection of this dice. Okay, so what we're going to do to do this orthographic projection is head up to the file menu up the top, go down to new, and just click on new. The dialog box appears. Okay, we're not we're going to work with parts anymore. We're going to scroll down this list until we see the drawing section. And we're just going to choose the ANSI millimeter drawing. Okay, it looks like this one, the IDW file. I don't know what the difference is between both of those. Anyway, we're going to go with this IDW file and click on create. And up comes a big template for us to use. Now, to get this working, remember I said we can't have any other documents open, just the dice that we've been drawing today. Okay, now in this drawing what we're going to do is go up to the base view up here and click on it once. And you'll see that your dice appears on the paper. I'm just going to shove that over to the left a little bit because we want a bit of room to work with. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is show you some different views of this dice. Okay, so this is the base view. Or the front view. The next thing I'm going to do is show the top view of the dice. Okay, so what we do is we click on this little arrow just at the top of the dice here, click and drag up, and you've got it's a bit hard to see, but there is a silhouette or a green dashed line showing me where I'd like to place the top view of the dice. I'm just going to click once about there. That's showing us the top view of the dice. Okay, moving down now, we can do the side view of the dice as well. Okay, so if you hit this little arrow here and click and drag out, let's get the side view about the same distance away as we put the other one and click once and that's showing us the side view of the dice. Okay, zooming out one last time, what we're going to do now is the isometric view which is basically the 3D view of the dice and we're going to put that up here in the top right. Okay, so you can click on this or you can even just hover around up in the corner here and it knows what it wants to put up there. So if I just click once up in this top right corner, there's our 3D view of the dice. That looks pretty good, so we'll click OK on that. And when you click OK, you can see that it chops it away and makes it into the 2D drawing, basically, of all the different views. This one up here, we want to shade this in, though, and have it in full color. OK, so this one here, when you click on it, you can see that it's view 4 over here in your browser. 
Just double click on this view four. Actually, you might have to click on the little icon next to it. And the dialog box will reappear just for this shape. What we want to do is just change our option here to shaded. So that one just there. When you click OK, it just colors it in for you. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Some of the other things we can do to this dice is put some dimensions on it. So I'm just going to zoom in. Um, I don't think it really matters which one we put dimensions on, so I'll just do it on this base view. Come up the top in your ribbon, choose the Annotate tab, grab the Dimension button, and we're going to come down to this line around here. Don't click on the center point or any of those little green dots, otherwise it won't work. Just click on the red line, click and drag up, and you can see that little number has your dimension in it, or the length of that width. Click once. And all we want to do here is just edit this text. Okay, it's a little bit small at the moment, so we'll just double its size. So simply highlight the text in this size, just make it the 6.1 mil. Click OK. Click OK. And that still didn't resize it for some reason. Let me just try that one more time. We'll see if we have any luck. If it doesn't work, we'll just leave it. Click OK. Oh, that seems to have worked. Click OK. Uh, who knows what's going on. Anyway, we've got our dimension just there. Alright, if we stick with the dimension tool, we can do the other side. So bring it out about the same distance. You want it looking consistent. Okay, I'll try and resize it again. I'm not sure why it's not working. It's a bit odd, but anyway, it is what it is. There we go. So that's got the two dimensions for those sides. Probably worth doing the circle as well. So click on the circle and then give it a diameter. It's probably best to get it outside of the shape actually. So we'll just put it straight out from there, maybe um, something like that. And click OK. That gives us the diameter of the circles. Um, we've got the little indents going from there to there. So what we might do is we'll just measure from there to there, bring it out, drop that into place. It looks a little bit ugly, but we'll go with that. And that would be about it. I think that's all the dimensions that we need. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, just zoom out a little bit more. It's probably best to label each of these views as well. Okay, so... I'm just going to turn, we'll go back to place views actually. And I'm just going to double click in my views here. I'm going to double click on the first one. Change his label here to front view. We're going to do it in capital letters. We'll just write front view. And press the little bulb here to toggle the visibility. You can even click the edit button here and work out what you want to write. Probably don't need the um, scale in there, so just delete the scale and just leave it as view. And click OK, click OK, and you can see down the bottom here you've got a label. You can move that if you want, but I think that's fine where it is. Let's do this one as well, so view 3. Um, which one's view 3? I think that's this one down here, so this is the side view. Let's double click on it over here. Capital letters again. Side view. Turn on the little uh, visibility, again edit it, and get rid of the scale. Just leave it as the view. Click OK. We've now got that label in. Up the top here, we just want to do uh, the top view. So that would be view number two. Turn it on, call it top view, and just edit what's written there again delete the scale, click OK, click OK, and we've got that labelled. Over here we've got the isometric view, I might as well add that in as well. Isometric view. Might leave the scale in on that one just so you can see what it looks like. There we go, 121 to 1, so that's a lot larger than its actual size. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. I guess the last couple of things we could do is just a few notes. So down the bottom here, okay, your name should automatically appear where it's, well, that's my username. That's fine. Probably best to give it a title. So in the annotate option here, you can just add some text in. Just click. And the title here, uh, capital letters again, we'll just call it 
dice. Can't get much more simple than that. If you want to make it a bit bigger, feel free. Looks like it's actually going to work this time for us, which is good. And if you press Escape to turn off the text tool, you can actually pick that up and move it to wherever you want to put it. Okay, a few other bits and bobs there that could be filled out. We don't need to do that. Okay, as long as we've got the date it's drawn, the title, and who it was drawn by, happy days. Okay, if you wanted to, you could put a title up the top here as well, but I'm not going to bother. We've got it down the bottom. So that's basically our sketch or our for our dice. Okay, so I'm going to save that now. Up the top, you can hit the save button. It's going to save it as an inventor drawing file. Okay, Let's click on save. That saves separately to your actual dice that you drew over here, which is your part file. Alrighty. So that's us done for this tutorial. We've got our dice. We've got our drawing. Okay, I'll see you in the next video where we make something new.